So, there has been something lately in the news, exactly yesterday to be exact. Uh, that is about politics. Uh, to be exact about that, uh, let's talk a little bit of background first. So, the Netherlands, like many countries, does have a way to ban organisations through uh, the judiciary power that applies to all organisations, whether they are corporation or uh, like a motor club that's doing something illegal, or maybe even political parties. Yes, there have been bans on political parties. However, the judges know to be very lenient with this. They only do it if a party has committed severely atrocious acts against public order, like say high treason or collective. But that one is only considered if it is done by the party as a whole. Like with the Dutch National Socialist Bond. Uh, they were banned after the Second World War, obviously, for high treason, and the leader Anton Mussert has actually been sentenced to death. The second party that was forbidden here in the Netherlands was uh, CP86, the Central Party of 1986. Uh, they were banned because of several party members having expressed hate against foreigners. They did then continue as the Central Party, but they weren't very popular. Now, there is a law coming in place that is going to allow the Ministry of uh, Justice and Security to ban uh, organisations like motor clubs that are performing criminal acts in there union, but not political parties, because, and here's the reason, this is very important, ministries are partial, judges are not. So, if a ministry thinks a party is coming against public order, they could just ban it, in fact they don't even need that kind of uh, evidence, they just say a party is dangerous and it's banned. Uh, well, it doesn't work at all for political parties, obviously. Uh, they are the very foundation of democracy, no matter what their opinions are. We can make compromises with them, except if one person counts. And that person has decided that in a change to that law, he wants a clause out that prevents it from being used against political parties. So that the Ministry could just ban a political party if they want to. Now that person was doing that in particular to be used against one particular party, the Forum for Democracy. Uh, and that person himself is an avid opponent of that party in the Democrats of 1966, D66 to be short. Which makes it a very good kind of assumption. He said, the democracy needs protection and banning political parties that go against democracy will protect it. Well, no, it will not. In fact, it will lead to a single party state because it will, the ministry will think that party needs to be banned, but then they might be called on that that party is also uh, a problem for the democracy. And also need to be banned and that goes on and on and on until there's only one party left and there's a 100% chance I guess that that party will be D66, the one that initiated the change of the law so I hope it won't continue. But how do you actually solve a problem of political parties that want to get rid of democracy? Well, uh, not by banning them, obviously, that actually increases our popularity. People think, hey, that party is a victim of the established system. But, A, they're effectively doing it by themselves with their expressions. In fact, <coughs> someone in the Forum for Democracy actually said that they should stand up, they should use violence against the government. And another person literally said that the world is governed by fucking <coughs> reptile. This is making the party very unpopular, except with very certain groups of conspiracy theorists, which are relatively small compared to the general populace, and therefore the party will bleed out in itself. The second way to get rid of a party that's undermining democracy 
is simply to not talk about it. As I always say, negative attention is still attention. Even if a party is being criticised, people will say, oh yeah, that is the established all down mainstream media doing stuff to get rid of it. And they will vote, so we should just ignore it. And the third is to solve the core of the problems that makes these parties popular. To make the democracy more resilient against influence from uh, big corporations and from uh, organisations that try to uh, get their will onto the parliament without actually becoming part of it. And the, I would actually uh, like it if there is a system that would ban these huge corporations if they try to undermine the values of our country and especially the environment and nature all around the world not even through the ministries, but directly through inspection agencies. So as soon as they see something going on uh, that undermines democracy or environmental policy, first uh, commission would look at it and be sure that that's really happening. If they do, the first time it happens, they would just turn a blind eye. They would rely on a company resolving their issues. Maybe it's an incident. Maybe it could be solved pretty quickly. If it's still happening or a new incident occurs a second time within, say, six months, they'll be warned. The third time and fourth time, they will be fined an unlimited amount of money, and the fifth time, they will be banned. We have to still be very careful with this and only apply to bigger corporations with a very large amount of assets, and those should be uh, monitored in revenue. Not profit, not possessions, but revenue. Uh, because a company that's got big revenue probably has a lot of backlog costs and costs to operate in the first place as well. So talking about like the big oil companies that are corrupting other countries. We're talking about factories that emit particular matter and other dangerous substances. Those should be at least thrown out of the country. Maybe they'll find a place in another country, but at least we keep our own secure against these kind of companies lobbying for uh, more lenient environmental policy, which is exactly the opposite of what's important for the people. We should shift our position away, in every case, from political parties to getting rid of them to the core of the problem, getting rid of everything that makes the core of the problem. And part of that is misuse of Parliament by big corporations to get their word out. Yes, I do think non-profits should still be able to lobby in, uh, for example, for more strict environmental policy or for human rights, but big corporations, they should be banned from uh, influencing Parliament, and if they strictly continue to do that, the entire company should be dissolved by order of the inspection agencies and banned. So that in the case the same people try the same thing again, they would be thrown to jail. But you do need to be pretty careful with that, so that not to influence the companies that do care about the environment or that do care about human rights. It is a very complex topic, but I can't talk about it right now all at once. But see you next time. Bye bye. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends and perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.